Hey, it's Dave. Welcome to Classic Bass Lines. Today, I'm going to break down this incredible bass line that Jay Diller sampled. I'll talk a little bit about what I love about it and what you can learn from it. And later on, I'll show you how to play it. So this beat is from a compilation of what were previously unreleased Jay Dilla tracks. I found it on King of the Beats Volume 1, and the track is simply called JD29. A friend sent this to me a few years ago just because he knew I would love the bass line, and boy was he right. I actually learned it that day, and I'm excited to finally show it to you guys here. Before we go on, I'll just mention that I'm hoping that this channel can be sort of a mix of me doing some of the more iconic lines that you know and love, and also some more obscure cuts that I think should get their chance in the spotlight. Let me know in the comments what you think about this approach. Okay, so JD sampled this bass line off a Steve Swallow track called Ice Cream that's off Steve's 1980 record, Home. I haven't quite gotten as into Steve Swallow as I need to be, but he's a brilliant and idiosyncratic bassist. Steve famously plays electric bass and is one of the first jazz bassists to play exclusively electric bass. He also plays with a pick, and he also typically uses an instrument that's a five-string bass strung with a high C. All of this combines to create a very unique and interesting kind of sound and approach. I first got hip to Steve's playing from a great episode of the old show, Night Music. Here's just a couple clips from that. This whole video is well worth your time. In addition to getting to hear Steve play with Carla Blay, the episode also features bass icon Bootsy Collins and New Orleans legend Alan Toussaint, who I've talked about on a couple previous videos. I'll put a link to the episode in the description. Anyways, this album Home shows just how deep JD would dig for samples. This record is works of poetry set to 1980s modern jazz not your typical hip-hop sample fare, which would tend to be funk, R&B, and soul jazz. And I remember one day he was on the rock side of the store, and uh, he's laying on the floor, and I go over there, I go, Jay, I go, what the hell are you doing over here on this side? And he starts, he's, he's laughing, he goes, man, he says, I've been through all that R&B and jazz, I got every album you guys got. The track that this is sampled from starts off with a great bass solo by Steve, accompanied only by Lyle Mays on synthesizer. Take a listen to that for a second. <laughs> And that goes on for a little while longer. So first I want to take a look at what Steve plays and then we'll take a look at what JD did with it. Just a heads up, Steve's recording is in the key of G, but JD's track is in F. I'm going to show you the whole thing in the key of F just for simplicity's sake. So Steve's line here shows a classic approach to playing over jazz harmony. It's mostly based on arpeggios built on seventh chords. The chord progression here is this. Now 
Now those chords can sound intimidating, but the approach here is surprisingly simple. So over the G minor seven chord, he plays. And if you break that down, you've just got third, fifth, root, seventh. And then over the C9 chord, that's third, fifth, root, seventh. Over the F13 chord, again, third, root, seventh. I'm just showing you the key notes of each line. And then over the D altered chord, so that's flat nine, root, fifth, seventh, flat nine. Then over the G dominant chord, that's fifth, third, root, seventh. Are you starting to notice a pattern here? And then over the C9 chord, third, root, root. Now we're back at the F, third, root, third, and then the D chord again. Fifth, third, fifth. So you see, it's all just those arpeggios with a little bit of scale tones in between. I encourage you to experiment with this approach on chord progressions. It can create some very nice lines. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here, there's this sort of rule in voice leading that when you have a flat seventh, it should resolve downward to the third of the next chord. Notice all the times that happens here. Seven of the G chord down to the three of the C chord. Now here's the C chord. Seven of the C chord down to the three of the F chord. Here the seven of the F chord can, if it resolves down a half step, it's actually on the root. Here's that G dominant chord. So that F, the dominant of the G chord, resolves downward to the E, but it loops around here first. Anyways, you see that creates quite a pleasing sound. Anytime your chords are moving around the cycle of force, this works. So now let's take a look at what JD did with this line. Here's the original track. And here's the JD track. So JD took just a few seconds of this solo, cut it into a loop, Vera speeded it down by about 12%, which puts it in the key of F and also puts it at a hip hop friendly 96 beats per minute. The track is actually ever so slightly out of tune. It's a little bit sharp of true F, but it's close enough. One interesting thing about this is how he flipped the sample. The chord progression on the Steve Swallow tune starts with the one chord. So it sort of does a one, six, two, five progression. That would be starting with this phrase. JD's version starts here. So that makes it a 2516 phrase, which really helps create that never ending, unresolved tension loop, which I think is really vital to have in a good, repetitive hip hop beat. Now, this could hardly be considered flipping by JD standards, but uh, it's just a nice touch. The other thing I noticed is that Steve Swallow's phrasing and sense of rhythm is such a natural fit for a Dilla production. JD is responsible for so much of that off-kilter drum sound that you hear in hip hop. And in this case, it's the bass that's kind of off-kilter. Steve's playing is very loose and free. It doesn't quite snap to grit. The rhythms that I've notated in my transcription should be considered a starting place. But if you listen closely, you can really hear how he pushes and pulls the time and how that interacts with the drum beat. Now I'll play a slow version of the line for you and afterwards I'll give you some playing tips. If this video has been helpful for you, please give it a like. 
If you want to see more videos like this, of course, subscribe. You can also financially support this and help me keep producing videos. I've got a PayPal link in the description and I'll be setting up a Patreon soon. Thank you. Okay, the main thing that I think you need to do to get this line grooving is to pay attention to where the notes are articulated and where they're slurred. Check out this first phrase. I pick this B flat and I pick the A, but I hammer on back to the B flat. You don't want to articulate See how it creates a smoother sound if you go than if you went. And if you played the whole thing, it doesn't have the flow, it doesn't have that rolling quality. So, and then same thing here. So I go G and then on the F to the E, it's just a pull off. When we get back to that F chord, it's the same thing but in reverse. So you go A, B flat, and then pull off the B flat onto the A. And when I hit this part, I do that E flat to D pull off. On this part, again, there, you don't have to slide if you can if you can play it with two fingers, it's just easiest for me to do if I slide. But I like that one too. And I have all these notated in the transcription. So try to work those into your playing. The other thing I would do is try to cop those moments where he pushes and pulls with the time. It's really, it's a challenge for me, but it's a good thing to work on. Use a program, slow down the beat, and you can really hear where his downbeat doesn't quite line up with the downbeat of the kick drum. And you know, there's this sort of, ooh, you know, kind of feeling to the whole thing. And it's a really great thing. And if you can get some of that into your playing, if you like the JD sound, if you like that drunk, loose hip hop feel, this is a good one to practice. Okay, that's it. Please let me know if this is helpful and we'll see you soon.